everybody, what the flick? Jenna, Alonzo, uh, it is Homeland Season 4, Episode 5, about a boy. No relation to the NBC sitcom or the movie that spawned it or the novel that spawned that. Take a look. <laughs> the first one's the biggest. Getting him to admit that Connie's actually alive. There's a rumor going around that your uncle wasn't killed in the attack. That's not what happened. Your guy, he's here at the airport. Cleric's on the move, heading south. If we don't get a draw on this cleric in the next five minutes, he's in the wind. What is this? He's a strange game they're playing. I want to be totally honest with you. Manipulating people, exploiting their weakness, it can get ugly sometimes. Why don't you tell me then just what it is you're doing in there? I'm recruiting someone. What is the kids are calling it now. Oh, recruiting. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Recruiting all night long. <laughs> yeah, I'm really squicked out. It's a, Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sure she's doing her job, you know, sure. but yeah. It's quick. Squick <laughs> is the word for bit. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, I like the stakes in this episode. Yeah. I like I like Saul getting kidnapped. That's exciting. Oh my god! I actually got out of my chair and yelped. Yeah, that. that's like oh, what the, you know, because you just he just sort of seemed unassailable all this yeah. time. And also the notion of like oh yeah, why hasn't somebody snuck into her bathroom and figured out that she's bipolar? Like that just seems like it was a, a plot twist just sitting there, you know. Although now I just worry they're going to do that dynasty thing where they're going to replace her drugs with something else and she's going to go crazy on the job. Oh, you, know, that, and, you mean she can go crazier? Well, you know, like maybe they'll paint her office with the lead paint. Like that yes. was that was the dynasty thing. Oh, that was. God. The thing. But yeah, so uh, but no, these are cool ideas. I'm like, all right, great. I think I think everybody got the notes that season three was kind of a shit pile, and so now Pretty they're much. really amping up, you know, the 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 espionage and what Ben likes to call the spy stuff. Yeah, the, all the spy stuff. Yeah, I think one of the things that I, I've said this before about the show, but. Um, it's really crazy how much I like somebody that I should absolutely despise. Mm. I mean, there's like attempted baby drownings and <laughs> screwing young boys and it just, I, I should really, really hate her, but her performance is so good. It's, and she's so layered. I mean, there's just so much to it that I can't help but like her. Well, it's interesting because you know there was that whole difficult men book. You know, mm -hmm. that was about the, the 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 golden age of TV is sort of all about the your Don Drapers and your your Tony mm -hmm. Sopranos and whatever. And they make the point that that the the difficult men get the hour long shows and the difficult women get the half hour shows, yeah. like Weeds and Nurse Jackie. So she's the difficult woman who gets a whole hour. <laughs> you know, yay. Yeah, <laughs> I really I really like her. Um, and I did like to see her vulnerability where she's. She's admitting, she's talking about her loss and she's talking about her baby and she's, although I thought it was a really odd thing to admit to him. Well, I, th you know, it's, it's almost this weird sort of therapy session where yeah. she's like, okay, here's somebody I can talk to about this sort of under the guise <laughs> of something else. Like it's, it, it's, it's, it's weirdly manipulative and kind of purgative for her at the same time. Cause like, these are the conversations that she cannot have with. Saul or with, you know, Rupert Friend or whoever, and so it's like she's getting it off her chest, but in the most, but using it as the, the awful means to an end to sort of continue to ensnare this kid. Yeah, you know? and there's this weird sort of split where you've got Quinn, um, that everybody in that room mm. was very, at Quinn and Farah, yeah. um, both of them actually care about things, and then you have Carrie talking to Saul, and oh, you only have a little bit of time, yeah, he knew exactly what she was going to do. Mm. And so it's interesting, like, what people, I mean, obviously the whole show is about what you're willing to do for the greater good. Sure. Or what, what can be done for the greater good. Or and what you think is the greater right, good. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, she did get laid, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, that was a really funny moment where he was, like, peeking under the covers. And it's <laughs> sort of, I don't know, that just felt like a really sort of real thing. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Especially for somebody who's grown up in that kind of repressive society, it's like... Like, oh, look, girl parts. <laughs> <laughs> um... I, I love that Farrah is being sent out into the field. Yeah. like, yeah, I know you're an accountant, but you're now going to chase that car, you <laughs> yeah. know? I love that. Yeah, actually, she's a really interesting character because obviously she's nervous. Obviously, there are issues with her that she doesn't really want to do this. But as soon as someone tells her, no, you're really good at this, she's like, ah, I am. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it is this sort of thing where, like, I don't know. I mean, I've, I'm on my third career now. So <laughs> when you start doing something new and someone says, oh, you're actually good at that, and you're like, Oh, maybe I should totally do this for a living. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the, there's a lot of people management on this show, yeah. like always, you yeah. know. Uh, and and, and I, I love Michael O'Keefe's thing of like, yeah, I'm a spy. We know things. <laughs> and, so and as soon as when he's drinking with the husband of the ambassador, he's saying, can I confide in you? I thought, oh, no, no, you can't. No. You cannot. Do I spy? Oh, come on. Yeah, you know. Like, don't you, you live here. You know this stuff. Yeah, he's kind of a mess. And I'm really curious about what the impetus was for him to start selling stuff, secrets. Right, we were talking about that a little last week. They haven't come out and said it, but obviously he 
probably it's that sort of classic, you know, power imbalance in a relationship where he feels impotent because, you know, he's this disgraced professor and she's climbing her way up the State Department. And so it was a way for him to feel important for a second to sort of do some little chicanery. And now, of course, it's totally blown up in his face and he's, you know, on the hook. Oh, he's a mess. He's yeah. a mess. But the ISI chick, whose name, do we know her name? I they said it last night because she right, gets right, introduced right, in the bar. Right, I've forgotten, right. but yeah, she's ISI a she's a, she's a cool customer. Oh, she's awesome! Wow. Yeah, she's she just has, and it's it's a really interesting thing because that's in a traditional society you've got this kick-ass yeah. chick who's just taking no prisoners, and mm. I just every time she's on screen, she's so compelling. I really yeah, she reminds me a lot of the season. To the the woman who was the yes. journalist, mm -hmm. who was also kind of was was spying for Abu Nazir. Uh, yeah, you're right. These women who come out of a culture that are that is not valuing you know strong uh, uh, centered women, and yeah, they're just like plowing everybody over, even though like they're terrible and you want them to lose. You're still sort of you have to admire that they exist at all. You yeah, know? you know there was a, a thing in um, in uh, Serenity like uh, or I'm a monster. I can't. The, I'm, I'm, you guys will know what character I'm talking about if you like Firefly. <laughs> like I'm a monster. I don't belong in the new society. I'm just here to create it. And it sort of reminded me of that last night because if this society does take over, then like she's she's useful for a purpose. Right. But then in the traditional society, should everything change in the world, she can't exist there. Right. A woman like that cannot exist there. Right. Right. So sorry, I just had to throw in a Firefly reference because no, no, that's no. what I do. I, I could bring up Yentl and how you know every time she asks <laughs> where is it written, I'm like it's written in those books you like so much, dear. That's where it's written. You know. Anyway, uh, with Mandy Patinkin, that's my link to oh, Gentle. Oh, I love him. Uh, <laughs> love him so much. So, yeah, so I, I, kinda, I really feel like they're amping stuff up, and, uh, you know, I was worried it was just going to be like, that it was going to be this, you know, Harold Pinter play of, mm -hmm. of, you know, the two of them in the apartment. But no, there's a lot of, all the different sub-characters are getting their moment, and we have the sort of whole overarching who done it for the season of, you know, how did the, how did, you know, Corey Stoll get set up for murder, and, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like the show is, you know, it, it maybe it's not up to season one and two standards right. yet, but we're definitely, I think, leaps and bounds ahead of, of the worst of season three. Yeah, I'm still excited to watch it where last season, I was like, oh, all right, I have to watch that today. Yeah, Homeland became homework. Yeah, yeah, but no, this season I'm re actually really excited and I can't wait to see next week. Cool. All right, well, we hope you'll be with us for next week, too.